My current position is a uh, project uh, engineer um, in the operations technology department. So I develop new technology and input it into the mill. Every day is a lot different than the last. You know, today we're going to do something completely different than I did yesterday and the day before. I'm a mechanical engineer here. When you come into work at, at 7.30, you, you kind of have no clue what you're going to end up doing. It keeps you on your toes. It's really been a great fit for me because I can work with HR to improve um, the process of how we hire new employees. And then I can turn around and go work on water-cooled panels with the melt shop. This is the primary project that I've been working on recently for the past, let's say, about two or three months. And it's to introduce um, automated measurement uh, at, at the basic oxygen furnace, BOF, uh, to measure the freeboard height. We're going to walk into the shop right now towards the center aisle where I designed my device. If number three furnace is active, heats and ladles will be processed through this aisle. So they'll travel in this direction underneath the center aisle. Now, what the operators have to do here is that they have to complete a sequence of tasks in a very constrained time frame. They have to approximately line up the top of this carriage to this mark. That's at 47 inches. That'll give us the exact freeboard measurement. I'd like a job where I'm not going to come sit in my office and play solitaire all day. But what I certainly appreciate about this position is that it's not necessarily um, a desk job. Most of the things you get done are going to be physically seen. Something that I design is real and will be put in, and once it's put in, um, it'll be put in permanently. All the equipment, um, in my eyes, is a mechanical engineer's dream. A lot of electromechanical systems, um, a lot of new technology. It's a pretty amazing process. To see the pieces of equipment work and do what they're supposed to do is very neat, especially when you have a, a line that holds two miles of, of steel strip and is going at 300 meters per minute and everything's in sequence doing what it's supposed to do, it's an amazing thing to see. The scale is just enormous out here. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of awe-inspiring. I mean, being out here is very different than just being inside a room. Just the magnitude, I mean, you have the ladle which is the size of a house. Think of a James Bond movie and you see this enormous complex and you're just like, oh wow, that looks ridiculous. I don't know anyone who works there. Well, you could work here. You give this uh, a 12 out of 10 on the coolness factor. When they're tapping, it's just something that you could see a million times and it won't, you won't ever get sick of it. Basically what the fall protection is going to do is it's going to put a uh, cable all the way down, all 2,000 feet. It's going to allow the bridge down there to go next to it and it won't interfere. Uh, and basically you can tie off uh, two 410 pound people every 30 feet to the system. It'll just be a, um, an apparatus that just slides right over the stanchion and it allows it to be a continuous all the way down. So all you'll have to have is a lanyard and your uh, fall protection. My first impression of the place was it's an old old mill, it's not going to be up to date, but we are actually updating systems every single day. The steel industry is not totally solved. There's a lot of improvement that we can make, and I've luckily been able to be involved in a lot of that. Because there's been an infusion of capital, we're able to upgrade and process this equipment very rapidly, and that creates a sense of excitement and uh, dynamism. Computer screens everywhere, video cameras everywhere. We're always looking for new ways to to make the steel. Steel may be even a better place for people who are interested in technology because there hasn't been that level of investment for the past 20 years. So now we need to kind of move towards modernizing and new people are essential for that. What we do here is we do all critical inspections for the uh, exposed um, sheet metal for going to the automotive industry. This part goes on the outside of the bed um, in the rear panel area. And all it is is a bruise type defect that goes to the width of the strip that goes into the coil quite some distance and uh, those panels or those blanks are no good then. If we can solve this problem, it's a million dollars in our pocket. It's, that's how large of a defect it is. 
What I think was uh, was interesting about this company is mobility, and this company certainly really really does encourage that. The availability and the ability to go anywhere in the world that you want. When I first started talking to them and, and found out the the opportunities that they presented, uh, not just in the uh, U.S. but also overseas, it was very attractive. In my group alone. Um, we have maybe six or seven uh, nationalities. I was in Brazil. I went there for three weeks, which was a really good experience to work with other people in the company. And I have a trip planned to go to Luxembourg to do some um, cultural competence studies and things like that, just getting my own personal skills as being a manager and being a leader within the company. If I want to go somewhere, all i got to do is speak up. If I want to go to a different plan, all i got to do is say something. If I want to go overseas, the opportunities are there. Those opportunities are available, and uh, it just makes life more interesting. What we are discussing is the renovation of this facility to be used as a training building. We do not have a previous facility. This used to be a personnel building. When personnel left this building, it was intended for the company to keep it and turn it into a training building. So what we're trying to do is retrofit the building so that we can fully utilize it as a training facility to be able to have our employees come to work and be able to do it here. It's just a better situation for us. With Arcelor Middle, it's uh, ridiculous on how many opportunities are in my future. Uh, not five or six years ahead of me, but a year ahead of me. We are experiencing a lot of retirement and we are encouraging um, new recruits to, to join the company. I might have spent five or ten years trying to get to where I am today that I've gotten in one year. So the opportunity is really there. I think it's going to be like a chain. It's going to be very quick and the chain is just going to keep turning. Um, and it's all linked down to me. But, you know, the chain's going to get pulled up and up and up. And really, they're looking for leaders. Capital projects of quarter million, half million, sometimes up to a million dollars that you have at the finger, at your fingertips, and at your control. It's a lot bigger than I expected. You know, my first project was going to be, but it kind of makes me feel a little powerful of being uh, in charge of something so important. To be able to work for the largest steel company in the world, it kind of speaks volumes. Everywhere you look, you're going to see something with steel in it, and I believe that most of the place you look, you're going to see something that came from ArcelorMittal. I really have to take a step back and realize, wow, I'm, I'm really involved here and I've only been here for a year and a month. And to think that I'm responsible for those results that are gonna help us sustain our ability to make steel, that's a big task. Our motto is transforming tomorrow and my tomorrow is really transformed. I definitely have a play into how we're gonna be doing in the future. That's, that's cool, that's a good thing. Thank you.